So I keep getting lots of questions on how to use NetLab. And this is a CSN resource for courses that I teach online or on site that uh, are allowed access to those resources. So first of all, netlab1.csn.edu. If you're in one of the courses, you should have been given a username and uh, an appropriate password. So I created a account. Here my account was my email. However, if you're a CSN student, your username should be your INSHI ID. But again, check with your instructor to make sure you're using the appropriate ID. I just created this account, so I'm using our temporary password. Again, that should be given to you by your instructor. I'm going to log in. I'm using IE because I don't normally use it, so I have nothing saved. First thing that happens is I'm going to be asked to change my password. I'm going to go ahead and change my password. If you want to change your email, you can. However, this is what uh, I want to use, so I'm going to go ahead and accept it. Next, date and time. This is extremely important. Most people click through this. Uh, CSN is in Nevada, PST, not GMT minus five. We want to make sure we're choosing the appropriate time. For Nevada, GMT minus eight, Pacific Standard Time. If you leave that default, you're going to notice scheduling will be slightly different. Display the uh, date and time, that's fine. First of the week, that's fine for me. And I'm ready to go. So NetLab is a scheduler. It allows you to schedule resources. So I'm actually going to New Lab Reservation. Some courses allow you to do team uh, collaboration, some don't. Most of them will be scheduling labs for individuals, so I'm going to schedule a lab for myself. This happened to be for a specific training that I'm currently doing that has access to multiple courses. So in your assignment sheet, you should be given what lab to be doing. I was told to be doing lab NDG Security V3 Lab 5. So that's what I'm going to select. Once you select the appropriate content, it gives you the individual labs. Again, I was told to do, sorry, it was Lab 4, performing active reconnaissance with Windows. So again, I'm currently doing this about 3.11 on July 7th, that's where that red line is. That is the current time. If you did not set the time appropriately, it would be set to 20. Well, actually, yeah, negative. It'd be set at a, at a later time. That's why making sure to set the current time is a pro, uh, important. For my example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose uh, a time about 3 o'clock. In the lab environment, if someone is currently at this pod of equipment and you also want to choose the same time, each column is different pods of equipment. And you can scroll through. So if we have 20 students on at the same time, there should be enough for everyone. All right, I don't think. 20, I think 12 is our max, but we can increase it if necessary. I'm going to choose just an empty pod at the time that I want. Start time is going to be 312. I want to set mine for a two and a half hour window. Some courses allow you to do extensions. Some courses don't. So actually I'm going to just do an hour and a half. I scheduled my time. 
if your time has not started, meaning you set it for, if I would have set mine to 3.30, for example, I would not get that. And actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to schedule it for the future. At 5. Again, different reservation number. This one, you'll notice you don't have the enter lab time because your lab time hasn't begun. So you will not get an enter lab option unless your lab time has begun. To edit it, you can click on it. You can dismiss or cancel your reservation. I'm actually going to cancel it because I don't need it. Yes, I'm sure. And that way that space can be given to someone else who actually does need it. So for my 808005 lab, which already begun, I'm going to enter it. The first time you go into it, it may take a minute or two to start just because it has to clone out and set up all the appropriate VMs. It is important to realize how to navigate, that's why I'm doing this. So we have our topology tab, we have a content tab. Again, I loaded lab 4. I can actually save this and open it on a secondary screen because these are going to be the lab steps that I take. It gives you a brief rundown of everything, topology. Uh, lab settings with the VMs, IPs, passwords. Most importantly, the steps. It gives you the step-by-steps on what to do. So again, having that on a secondary screen, very helpful. If any of your uh, VMs happen to freeze, you can actually power them off and power them back on. If you're taking a Cisco course and you want to power cycle your Cisco equipment, same thing. You can power on and power off your Cisco equipment. Uh, because the Cisco equipment is actually physical equipment, that will issue a restart command, not a unplug, essentially. These are the different VMs. And again, you can actually undock them so you can move them around. IE kind of is a little weird. It likes to zoom in. So uh, you can actually set the appropriate size of the display and that will stop the zooming in portion. But that's all of our routers that we're allowed to use. I'm going to go back to topology. Time remaining. You get, I think, up until the last 10 minutes. The last 10 minutes, the equipment will scrub what you're doing. Nothing is saved, so you cannot damage the environment. You cannot impact other users typically. So what happens if I'm in the middle of doing a lab, I get done with the lab, and I want to move to the next lab? You actually have some options over here. Under reservation, if you're running out of time, you can request more uh, time if you want and if your instructor has allowed it, or you can change exercise. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change exercise. Sadly, because my pod was set up for Security Plus, I only can change the labs in that pod type. So let's say I want to work on Lab 6. I'm going to go to Lab 5. Again, you have some settings that you can play with but not really a whole lot. The time. It saves back to the uh, original reservation. It documents on the back end, essentially. And uh, it loaded the next lab. 
content will be the new lab environment. But that way you can use your time to complete as many labs as you want. Some people don't want to, some people do, so I wanted to show that that's what you're capable of doing. When you are completely, you know, we'll do a request more time just to show you. Some environments will let you. Sometimes it likes to freeze for a moment while doing it. Okay, I don't recommend doing a time preservation extension in IE because it actually denied it, but it would not let me click out of it, so I actually just had to close that session and get back into it. Anywho, so yeah, don't request time extension. Just set your time appropriately. If your reservation ends, most courses allow you to jump right back in to schedule additional time. Some instructors will set a one hour cooldown between reservations. It just depends on your instructor. So I'm done. Uh, I'm no longer doing any work today. I can do end reservations. That will terminate my session and give those resources back to our scheduler. Before I do that, I want to do your, your account. Your account has a basic setting and logout, and that, that's really all you get. Some of the Cisco courses, you have the ability to email your configs to your instructor. So my reservation is done, it kicks me out, and that's it. That is how you use NetLab to schedule and complete labs. And if you want to move on, schedule a new lab, you can because again I've not set a restriction so I can schedule a new lab and I can continue on working the goal should be to schedule as you need do not pre-schedule a bunch of lab time we find that students that do that typically don't show up and uh, because of that they just waste uh, those resources we only have certain amount of pods of equipment so if you schedule and you don't use it that's kind of a waste for us I'm gonna cancel my reservation because I'm not actually going to use it so sometimes uh, if your lab time began, you can't actually cancel it because you've already began it. That's why I'm going to log in and just cancel it this way gracefully. And that is how to use NetLab in a nutshell. If you have any questions or concerns, reach out to me. Steve is our NetLab support technician. He is pretty busy and Normally, if you have a NetLab question, reach out to your instructor first, and we go from there. If you have any questions or concerns, again, reach out, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you.